Why is it important for us to know what our strengths are? Because you're going to market yourself on the basis of that. When you know uh, confidently what those strengths are, you can make bold promises because when you work with perfect clients, those perfect clients pull those strengths out that you're able to, uh, you know, put all of those strengths together and point them in the direction of the client. So they're going to receive something. Hey, it's Samantha Hartley of the Profitable Joyful Consulting Podcast. This season, we've been talking about gifts and talents, skills and expertise. That's all different ways of talking about strengths. And one of the things that I find about strengths, especially for women consultants, is that um, uh they talk about it in the safety briefing on an airplane. You know, when they go through here, all the safety instructions, the things you need to know on the plane at the, um, uh, when the flight attendant is up there doing the demo, uh, what line do you think I'm going to talk about? The line you probably think I'm going to talk about is the oxygen mask line of like, put your child's mask on before you put your own mask on, right? And that has a lot of meaning for us. But there's actually another line in there that I think has a meaning for both business and life. And that is the closest, please be aware that the closest exit may be behind you, right? So you're sitting in your seat and the exit row could be like immediately behind you. But if something were to happen, you'd like go to the front and there'd be all these crowds and there'd be like 15 rows before you got to an exit. So the closest exit may be behind you. It's talking about uh, that we have blind spots. We have things that are not in our awareness and they'd be like right there. It's really close to us, but we don't see it. And to me, this is what happens a lot of times with consultants with their strengths. You're, it's so close to you. It's like the water that you're swimming in if you're a fish. You don't see it. You don't notice the thing uh, and you're amazing at it. So very often I'm working with consultants who are like, oh, what? This whole piece of crap? Like, why is this important? And I'm like, uh, that's like you're you, unique to you. Like you were uniquely good at that thing. Uh, I had a client one time uh, who basically reacted that way, kind of like, um, you know, you compliment someone on a dress or something and they're like, this whole thing? Like, I just pulled this out of the closet. I had this thing for years. And it's like, well, I just noticed it today and I think it's fabulous. So we don't have perspective on our own strengths. And you may be incredible at something and just feel like, oh, well, I've been doing that my whole life. Okay, cool, fine. But everybody hasn't been. The thing that you were uniquely good and talented at, everybody hasn't been doing their whole life and everybody hasn't experienced that or seen that. And so you are bringing something into the world that nobody else can do or nobody else does like you do it. And that's an important thing to keep in mind. So I think the way that we become aware of this, a lot of times you need someone like me to say to you, hold on, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, you are unique. Uh, and you're doing something that I've either never seen someone do before, or you're doing it in a way that is unique and different and unique to you. So you have to have um, people who can see you and get you mirror things back to you. So I spoke the other day in the big episode that sometimes we're surrounded by people and they're too small to really see you, or they are, uh, I would say, too wrapped up in their own thing to be able to have the the grace to recognize it in you or the um, humility or the confidence to be able to express that back to you. Okay. So sometimes we are around people who, you know, maybe everyone is really secretly envious of you and like you're amazing. And those people won't give it back to you. Uh, kind of a weird analogy for this is if you've ever been around someone and you make a joke and they won't laugh at you because laughing is going to be vulnerable for them. Laughing is going to say, ah, you got me. You made me laugh. Uh, so I notice that, that dynamic sometimes with people who don't want to give ground, who don't want to say, mm, yeah, there was something to that thing that you just did. So what does that mean? You need a better audience, right? You need people who can handle you and you need people who are big enough to see the bigness of you. That goes for your clients, colleagues, and then, you know, just the people that you're around on a regular basis. Now, a lot of times what happens is if you're around your family of origin or around around people who've known you for a really long time, they don't necessarily... In in all friend circles, they don't necessarily mirror things back to you and allow you to uh, to evolve, to get better, to be um, to be big, to be unique. Uh, they'll be like, uh, "Come on, you know, just cut that out. It's just come on, it's us. Like, stop being, you know, don't be so like whatever, right? Trying to show off or trying to be something. So you need to be around people who are affirming. And hey, if that's not who your family is, that's okay. We love our families. Can't do much about it. Um, but you do need to be in a circle of people who are like, hold on, hey, you're amazing. 
So you're going to become aware of those unique strengths that you have a lot of times by having them mirrored back to you. Another easy way to have this done is with your clients. When you get in front of clients, I want you to ask for feedback. And it's not fishing for compliments so much, so I don't want you to get that in your head. But you're going to say, you know, um, what was helpful, what was valuable that we did today. And a lot of times they'll say, wow, you're really amazing at, and then tell you what that is. So listen for that and invite that feedback from your clients. Uh, They may also say, you know, not as positive feedback, which is also good information for us. But what I'm specifically looking for today are those invisible strengths, which are things that you're amazing at that maybe are not obvious to you. Uh, So uh, you can get that from coaches. You can get that from the people around you. You can definitely get it from your clients because they're the ones who are receiving that value, right? If you're choosing clients correctly, exactly what they need is exactly what you do. And when you do that thing for them, they're going to mirror it back to you. A lot of times we know some of our strengths, right? You're, you're like, okay, well, I know I can help my clients to do X, Y, Z. However, you're starting to get new feedback about something else. So that's good. It's always helping you to kind of um, expand your own uh, understanding of what your strengths are. So listen for that. Listen for when there is that new information and what those new strengths are. Um, I've been talking about personality assessments this season. Personality assessments are a great way for you to hear what your strengths are and to see, do you agree? So I'll take those tests. I've taken, you know, dozens of them over the years. And a lot of times they're like, okay, creativity is going to be one of my top strengths. Great. Cool. I know that. Um, and I'm confident in that one. And then so from time to time, gosh, I had one that said something like mercy. And I was like, mercy. Okay, cool. Interesting. And so then I could learn a little bit more about that. So I want you to, um, you know, keep, uh, exploring become an expert on yourself, right? So keep learning and exploring and and digging up those uh, new insights into yourself. Why is it important for us to know what our strengths are? Because you're going to market yourself on the basis of that. When you know uh, confidently what those strengths are, you can make bold promises. Because when you work with perfect clients, those perfect clients pull those strengths out that you're able to, uh, you know, put all of those strengths together and point them in the direction of the client. So they're going to receive something. Now, a strength is kind of a feature as opposed to a benefit, right? So for example, creativity on my part, I'm super creative. Yay, yay, you, right? But what does it mean for the client? It means that, and that's how you're going to discern what the benefits are. You're going to say X is the the, um, strength and that which means that my clients, and then you're going to fill in the blank. And you can do that over and over again. So which means that I ha- I can come up with multiple ideas for ways that my clients can do things, which means that what? Which means that they can always find um, a marketing technique or a sales idea or um, an, a- an idea for how they can do something which is going to align with their values or uh, that they're going to like. So if I, if I deliver one idea and they don't like it, I got a million more behind that one. So which means that they're going to be able to find a way to do something that they like, which means that what? Well, I think that they're going to be more profitable and joyful. So usually when you get to that point, there's no more which means that's after it. But you do want to take that that whole line of thinking out as far as you can. So remember, your strengths are um, a feature. The benefits are what your clients get from you from that. So your assignment on this one is keep identifying those strengths. Look at all of the assessments that we've talked about. Look at, you know, ask for your, uh, ask for feedback from people who know you really well and you feel like see the best of you. I don't care about feedback from people who don't get you. I really don't. If you get negative feedback from somebody and you feel like they don't even really know me, Heck with it, right? Do not care. Do not, uh, don't, don't take that in. Don't even worry about it, right? We only care about pe- uh, feedback from people who really see you and really get and know what the best of you is. Uh, it's also you on your best day. So if you're kind of crabby one day and you get a little bit of negative feedback from a client, all right, well, that was you on your, on, on one of your worst days. What we want to know is how are you on one of your best days? So when you're really on, you're well rested, you're doing your show. What are you like and what's the feedback that you get there? Okay. So we have taken the, the benefits that they get. We've taken the strength that we have and the benefits to them. The benefits to them are your value to them. Okay. So I want you next, after you've identified the strength, to really identify the value that that means for your clients. And value uh, very often means um, can correlate to price, right? Now, it's not your price because you are um, in, uh, 
unpriceable. Yeah, there's no number that we can put on you. You are priceless. Um, you're a unique and beautiful gift from um, the universe. Come to earth to deliver some something. And that something, I believe, that we're brought to the planet to deliver is that value. What is my value? And I think um, every relationship on earth is about value exchange. You um, Maybe I say a compliment to a random person in the grocery store, and that is super meaningful to her because she was having a rough day. Um, and I may or may not get a, a value back from her. Maybe I get a smile, a, a sincere smile, and I think, oh, that was really nice. So we've had a value exchange, which was intangible in this case. Now, in a lot of our work, obviously, we're doing tangible value exchange. So you're bringing those strengths, you're doing some transformation for your client, and they are paying you money for that. So if your strengths are invisible to you, as they are to some of my clients, you'll get into this situation. So I had a client say, oh, well, I don't I don't really want to bill them for that. It only took me like 20 minutes. Guess what? It only took you about like 20 minutes because you're a deep expert at it. You're amazing at that. That's a gift. So you've got to bill not for your time. This is why, by the way, we don't do hourly pricing. You have to bill for the value the client received. So what was client able to be, do, or have? That's benefits language, right? What were they able to be, do, or have based on the thing that you did in only 20 minutes? I don't care if it was only 20 minutes. It, what if their life changed? What if they were able to go and add $100,000 of value to something? What if they were able to hire somebody or fire somebody or sell something? The value that they received is where we determine what the value is, what value we promise, and how we price things, okay? So you've got to recognize when I do my uh, show, when I do my gift, when I deliver value to my clients, what they receive is this. And that's how we begin to price our services. You know, one of the things that I help my clients do is um, is to, they tell me who they are. They tell me the bigness of who they are. They tell me their goals. And a lot of times it's like, I want to have a $2 million business or a $3 million or a $30 million in some cases. I want to have that business. And then I'm helping them to achieve that. So how much do I charge? Do I charge $50 an hour? No, I'm going to charge commensurate to the, ba- the value that I'm going to bring those clients. Now, sometimes I think, wow, this is really expensive. It's none of my business. It isn't my business. It's none of your business uh, What that? how expensive something is. Expensive, don't ever say your services are expensive. I've had people write that before. Expensive is relative. Expensive to you is not expensive to me and vice versa, right? It's totally a relative number. What we want to look at is what is your client going to be able to do, be or have, as a result of the value that you brought to them? So if I think, dang, that's kind of a high price. Really, do you want to limit your client? I've said this to myself before. Wow, I don't want to limit my client by saying, if they're paying me this, whoo, that's a heck of a lot of money. Yeah, guess what? They're going to do this. They're going to change the world based on the work that we do together. And I'm like, how much more are they going to be able to do with my assistance? That's what I'm looking for. How can I help them to get ever better results? How can I help um, my client to be the biggest version of herself, the most effective version of herself? Uh, how can I help her to um, to structure her business and her services so that she's giving the most of her strengths without um, taxing herself, right? With uh, while, while staying only in her joy and genius zone. So that's all about value. And it's nothing about like, huh, you know, it's easy for me. It should be easy for you. Your gifts should be super easy for you. When you're in your joy and genius zone, why is it easy? Because your joy zone is the thing that gives you energy. And your genius zone is what you're so good at. Like you can do this in your sleep. So when you combine those things together, it should be easy. It should be fast. I don't care how long it takes you in your work. And if it's taking you out eight hours, I hope that was the funnest eight hours you have spent in years, that you had an amazing time because you're channeling genius through yourself. When you're bringing all your best ideas and like the thing that you're really good at, like that should energize you like crazy, right? It should energize you like crazy. So I want you to identify the value that you bring to your clients. And then when you think about pricing, I want you to think about the value that it gives to them, the value they receive and nothing about what it's costing you. Unless there are times when you're doing something that is maybe a little more energetically expensive. Cool. All right. Last thing I want you to think about. I have a lot of people who are like, I feel out of integrity because I'm teaching people how to do X, but I'm not good at X myself. Like, I'm not amazing at that. 
So I've seen people teach time management and they were like, they still struggled with it. Now they didn't suck at it completely, but they, they, they weren't up to their own standards with it. And I'm like, guess what? You're a student in the school of time management and you're working on getting ever, ever better at it. And you're not at your own A plus level yet. However, you know where everybody else is? Way back there, way back there in F minus. And we're feeling it. We're feeling the way in which we super, super suck at it and we don't want to be there anymore. So even if you're not like at your own standard of where you want to be, it's okay to say, hey, I'm great at this. I'm actually really awesome at it and I'm much better than you are. And so let me teach you what I know. Okay. Now I say this, uh, knowing that there is a dilemma, this integrity dilemma that comes up for a lot of us and it comes up for me too. So I'll tell you what I do. When I hear myself say advice to somebody three times, I go, okay, I heard that. I got to get better. I got to do better at this. So for example, if I'm teaching someone about marketing or if I'm talking to them about sales, I better be doing that thing or else I hear that advice and I go, that was actually advice for me. Okay. Uh, we have a friend who's a stand-up comedian. He says, whenever you point your finger at anybody, you actually have three fingers that are pointing back at yourself. And so he says, so I'm going to point like this in the future, point all, all my fingers that way. So that cracks me up. Uh, it's, this is how we grow and evolve. This is how you are in integrity with your strengths is that you say, you know what? I'm no, I'm not perfect, but I'm really pretty good at this. And I can help other people who are maybe two or three steps behind me. And that's cool, right? That's okay. It's okay for them to be like a little bit behind you. You are still in integrity. And I call this being immune to your own superpowers. So a lot of us can't like um, give the, the world's best advice to ourselves uh, as well as we can to other people because we just don't have the objectivity. So we that's why we need coaches. That's why coaches need coaches. And that's why uh, we need other people that we trust who can give us feedback on our stuff. But it doesn't mean that just because you are immune to your own superpowers that you're not great at giving that to other people. And other people will not care. Um, I had a friend who wouldn't take advice from um, an accountant because uh, she didn't like how he dressed. And I was like, just because he doesn't dress uh, in Armani suits and like he's a multi-million dollar guy, it doesn't mean he's a mul not a multi-million dollar guy. And he, by, by the way, he was. So just keep in mind that other people, if they're assessing you on a factor like that, maybe they're not the right fit for you. Okay. Your person is looking for what you have and what you deliver. Um, so, uh, give yourself grace. Also work on it. Also work on improving yourself, but remember you just may be immune to your own superpowers in some areas. Uh, and you're a work in progress and the people who are coming to you for coaching are a little further behind you on the path. Um, one of my clients says that when she comes in, that all of the, the leaders, when they become aware of what they're teaching, they're like, oh my God, we're so terrible at this. And she's like, don't worry, everyone is. Everyone is when I first come in and work with you. And I feel like this is the thing where almost everybody out there is like, I know, I like, sure, I'm really good, but I'm just not, I'm not perfect. Guess what? No one is. Okay. So um, if you're immune to your own superpowers, Keep working on it, but allow yourself to be less than perfect and don't let that um, impact, negatively impact your ability to make big, bold promises about what you can do for your clients. I don't care how my accountant dresses. I care what he can do for me um, with the numbers. I hear, care how much time he he uh, and results, time he, time he saves me and results he gets me, right? That's the bottom line at the end of the day. Okay, so... If you have blind spots about your strengths, then you have heard today what you need to work on. And if you would like help with that ever, then that is something that I help my clients to do. I'm a big mirror to them. Um, my, you know, mission in life is that I see your highest potential. When you tell it to me what your, what you think your big dream is or what your big vision for yourself is, I believe it. And I help my clients to achieve it. That's what I do. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this one and I'll look forward to hearing uh, your feedback and reactions on all the socials where you can find me. And with that, I am wishing you a profitable and joyful consulting business. Thanks for watching. I'd appreciate it if you'd like this episode. And if you enjoyed the show, why not subscribe? Be sure to click the bell to get notified when new episodes drop.